As the movie begins, we see a teenager named Olive Pendergast talking into a webcam. She is confessing about how her little white lie turned her life upside down. Olive promises to share her side of the story and the truth about what actually happened. Furthermore, the poor teenager acknowledges that she was never particularly popular or noticed in school, but her life has changed dramatically in just a week. The scene then shifts to a flashback, where we see Olive at school with her best friend Rhiannon. Rhiannon invites her best friend on her family's camping trip, but Olive is hesitant because she finds Rhiannon's parents a bit weird. While her best friend persists, Olive makes an excuse and claims to have a date with a man named George. At first, Rhiannon doesn't trust this story, but Olive insists on remaining behind for her date. The following Monday, when Rhiannon asks how her date went, Olive lies to her, claiming George was a true gentleman and that they spent the entire weekend together. Hearing this, Rhiannon asks if they slept together, and Olive responds that she didn't because she is not that type of girl. However, Rhiannon does not believe her and brings her to the bathroom to spill the beans. With no other choice, Olive fabricates another story in which she explains how George took her virginity and the things they did all weekend. Just then, a girl named Marianne comes out of the bathroom. Marianne is a devout Christian who also leads a conservative teen church club at the school. She is disgusted by Olive's story and decides to pray for her sinful actions. On top of that, Marianne tells this story to other people and word spreads around the school that Olive has lost her virginity. Afterward, Olive approaches Marianne and informs her that what she overheard in the bathroom is not true. Marianne, on the other hand, does not believe her and asks her to turn to God. Olive, who isn't used to being the center of attention, recalls the last time her romantic exploits were the talk of the school. In eighth grade, she was partnered with her crush, Todd, while playing Seven Minutes in Heaven. While she was thrilled to have a shot with him, Todd became nervous and asked Olive to lie about them kissing, which she did. The next day, when Olive goes to school, she attracts a lot of attention, which she didn't want at first, but now she starts liking it. In class, they have to read the novel, The Scarlet Letter, which she begins explaining to her favorite teacher, Mr. Griffith. To summarize, the novel's main character has an affair with a preacher, has a daughter out of wedlock, and has her reputation ruined. As a result, she wears the letter A to symbolize her guilt and adultery. Just then, one of Marianne's minions suggests that Olive must wear an A on her chest, to which Olive responds by cursing the girl in foul language. Due to this, she is summoned to the principal's office, and while waiting outside his office, Olive notices an old friend named Brandon who is seen walking in with a bloodied nose. She is then given detention. On top of that, if she says such vulgar language again, the principal warns of expelling her from school. Outside, Rhiannon asks if she cursed her classmate and then punched her. Olive finds this alarming because of how quickly the story spread across the school and how people exaggerate things. She then tries to persuade Rhiannon that whatever she told her about the date was a lie, but Rhiannon doesn't believe her. Later, we are introduced to Olive's family, which includes her parents and adopted brother. She informs them of her detention, but her parents trust her and aren't too worried. Olive asks them if they'd be willing to testify about her being in her room all weekend and they promise to do so if needed. In the next scene, Olive is mopping at school with Brandon, who has also got detention. It turns out that he is gay and is often bullied due to this, so he got into a fight. Olive advises him to stay in the closet and pretend to be straight, at least until the end of high school. But Brandon gets offended by her suggestion and declines her idea, telling her she's crazy, but also a genius. He then confronts her about the rumors about her, and Olive says that it's all a lie and that she hasn't slept with anyone. The following day, Brandon arrives at Olive's house and asks her if she wants to go out with him so he won't be bullied for being gay anymore. Olive, on the other hand, is horrified and refuses to participate in any of this. Instead, she advises him to tell everyone he's been seeing a girl. Brandon is well aware that no one will believe him, so he asks Olive if he can tell people he is dating her. Olive wants to say no, but after many pleas from him, she finally agrees. The next evening, Brandon and Olive show up at the party of one of the most popular girls in school. There, they act drunk and are all over each other. The two soon enter a room where Olive pulls her undergarments down and hangs them from the doorknob so no one can look inside. They lie in bed together and begin grunting, moaning, and making other noises while their classmates outside listen. And once they're finished, Brandon thanks Olive and walks out, leaving everyone speechless. Moments later, Olive's childhood crush, Todd, appears at the scene, and the two flirt for a while. 
However, because everyone is only talking about her, Olive feels uneasy and leaves the party. Afterward, Rhiannon calls Olive and asks if she really slept with Brandon. Rhiannon is furious that she found out about her best friend from someone else. When Olive says yes, Rhiannon angrily tells her not to sleep with any random guy just because she has lost her virginity. Olive accuses her of being jealous since she is now more popular than Rhiannon. And after a lengthy argument, Olive hangs up the phone and decides to embrace her new identity. The next day, Olive wears a very revealing top with a capital A on her chest in honor of the Scarlet Letter. As she walks to school, the students are taken aback by her sudden change in appearance and attitude as she casually sexualizes her every move. This irritates Rhiannon and she begins insulting her, but Olive doesn't care anymore. Mr. Griffith is also shocked by her sudden transformation and asks her what she's doing, which embarrasses her. Meanwhile, Marianne is reunited with her fellow Christians who are discussing Olive's behavior. The group then decides to protest against her to bring the newest hot girl down. Later, Olive is approached by a student named Evan who is constantly rejected by girls. It turns out that Brandon has told him about their act, and now, he has come to beg Olive for the same favor. Olive immediately declines his offer and he offers to give her $100, which makes her even angrier. She walks away, but Evan sits down, upset, claiming it was a mistake. She then feels sorry for Evan and accepts his offer in exchange for $100. Soon, word spreads like wildfire that Olive does things for money. She receives numerous offers and gift cards and she quickly becomes the center of attention at school. One afternoon, Olive is summoned by Mr. Griffith for a conversation. He wants to talk about the new persona she's taken on and tries to find out if anything's wrong at home. Therefore, he arranges for Olive to meet with his wife, who is the school counselor. Later, as she sits down with Mrs. Griffith, she intends to tell her entire story. But before she can, the counselor hands her a handful of protection. Olive tells her she doesn't need it, but Mrs. Griffith insists that she does and dismisses her. When Olive walks out of the office, she runs into Marianne, who is crying because her boyfriend Micah's parents are divorcing, so Olive tries to assure her that everything will be fine. Marianne wonders why she is being so kind to her and believes that she must have gotten through to her, so she asks Olive if she wants to be friends and before Olive can respond, Marianne celebrates their new friendship. For a while, Olive and Marianne get along great until her pure Christian boyfriend Micah has chlamydia. When his mother asks him where he got it, in a moment of panic, he claims it's from Olive. Naturally, the word spreads quickly and Marianne becomes enraged, so she slaps Olive in the locker room. Unaware of Micah's lie, Olive goes to Mrs. Griffin's office to find out what's actually going on. We then see the counselor in remorse as she admits to having given Micah chlamydia. She claims that it is legal because he is 22, but she risks losing her job and tarnishing her reputation. She then begins to cry about how her marriage is falling apart, and Olive feels awful for her, so she decides to accept the blame. When Olive goes outside, there are students holding signs in protest against her. She feels compelled to open up to a higher power, so she goes to church. Olive confesses all she has done and asks the priest if she has done anything wrong. However, when she does not receive a response, she opens the window between them and discovers that no one is present, so she visits another church and speaks with a pastor. Olive asks the pastor if hell exists and which sin is worse, adultery or lying. Just then, she knocks over one of the pastor's framed portraits, which is a family photo, revealing that Marianne is his daughter. So she hurries out of the church quickly without saying anything. The next day, Olive grows frustrated, thinking that although everyone thinks she is sleeping around, no one dares ask her out on a real date. But this changes when a guy named Anson approaches her and asks her out. That evening, they visit the lobster shack and appear to be having a good time until she notices Todd, who happens to work there. But to make matters worse, Olive sees Rhiannon at the restaurant and recalls that she has a crush on Anson. Therefore, she quickly rushes out of there with Anson and apologizes to him for ruining the dinner. Anson then offers her $200 in exchange for intercourse and forces her to kiss him. However, Olive tells him she doesn't do it for money and that it's all a rumor, but he still comes on to her. This compels Olive to push him away and asks him to leave. Afterward, Todd notices Olive in distress and tries to console her. He offers to drive her home and she cries the entire way, confessing to Todd that all the rumors are fake. Todd claims that he does not trust any of the rumors because she once lied to him too. Todd says he's always had feelings for her and asks if he can kiss her, but Olive refuses, telling him that she has wanted to kiss him since eighth grade and that she wants to make it special, so she must sort out her life first. The following day, Olive goes to the boys who approached her before. She knows Brandon will help her, but it turns out that he's left the city. She then approaches the other boys, but they all refuse to speak the truth. 
Eventually, Olive approaches Mrs. Griffith and requests that she admit to giving Mike a chlamydia, but she also refuses. She claims that even if Olive reveals the truth, no one will believe her. In a fit of wrath, Olive storms into Mr. Griffith's office and informs him that his wife has chlamydia and that she passed it on to Micah. However, shortly after saying it, she regrets what she just said, realizing she has just ruined a marriage. Now, at a pep rally the next day, Olive performs a song in a very revealing costume. She then informs everyone that she and Todd will be live streaming that evening. We finally return to Olive's broadcast where she admits to every lie she told, beginning with the one she told Rhiannon and continuing through a series of rumors. As she's finishing up, Todd comes by riding a lawnmower and tells her to come out. She then ends her webcam confession by saying she truly likes Todd and might lose her virginity to him in the future, but at the end of the day, it is no one's business. And as the movie ends, Olive leaves the house to kiss Todd, and they ride away from the neighborhood on the lawnmower. That was it for the recap, guys. Let us know in the comments if you like it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.